Okay, let's continue our Trinity current from previous videos. Uh, we saw that the voltage to the capacitor is equal to current times the reactance, where the reactance is equal to this quantity. Also, the uh, reactance uh, of the inductor, right, in this um, formula. And uh, also we found the average power, right? It's gonna be the root mean square voltage times the root mean square uh, current. Great, now let's go to AC circuits in series. Uh, using uh, resistors, um, inductors, and uh, capacitors. Great, let's go to RC circuit, RC circuit. And we have uh, the source right here, also, we have the resistor and we have the capacitor. All right, perfect. And now let's use um, Kirchhoff rules, the loop rule. It says that the voltage, right, the torque voltage is the sum of the voltage traps. Like in this case, this should be in this way. Uh, the voltage of the source is equal to uh, the voltage uh, through the resistor plus the voltage through the capacitor. But the difference right here is that these voltages are out of phase to the voltage of the source. So this condition is not correct, right? Well, because uh, we have from the previous analysis that if this is the maximum voltage to the capacitor and this is the voltage to the resistor, these two are out of phase uh, 90 degrees, correct? 90 degrees. So. This condition is not correct, but we can make this correct only if we deal as a vector these quantities, correct, in this way. If we have these conditions, well, now this is valid, this is valid, right? Where, again, we can use also the, um, the magnitude, like in this picture, how we can find then the total voltage. Well, using Pythagorean theorem, we can see that the total voltage is equal to voltage through a square, right? Voltage through the capacitor or voltage to the resistor, the square plus voltage to the capacitor square. And again, this uh, condition behaves in this way if we take this as a vector, taking this direction to be uh, i hat and this direction to be j hat. Perfect. Now, let's find then the magnitude, the magnitude is equal to square root of uh, the voltage to the resistor square plus voltage to the capacitor square. But we have found before, right, the quantities using reactances, right? We have that the voltage, the torque voltage of the source, right, is equal to square root of current times resistance is square plus um, plus current times the reactance through the through the um, capacitor square but the current is constant because this is in series right when the current is in series the current is constant well in this case we have the current it goes out of this radical and we have that uh, the voltage is equal to current times R square plus the reactance square. Right. Now we compare this to Ohm's law, which says that voltage is equal to current times resistance. We can call this in this way current times a quantity Z. In this case, Z is called the impedance, right? Where Z or z is gonna be equals to z equals to square root of r square plus this reactance square. Correct? Perfect. So we can find then that voltage right uh, of the source can be represented as the current times the impedance, where the impedance is equals to the square root of r square plus right, the reactance is square. Great, now let's do one example using this information, right, 
also in this formation where we have a um, resistor and a capacitor but before that let's see what happens when we represent this using using the uh, the uh, phasor diagram one more time and this is a phasor diagram right it is this voltage to the resistor voltage to the capacitor right and we get the total voltage of the source also uh, we can uh, represent this as the values using reactances right this is a uh, current and resistance and this is um what current times the reactance and this is equals to current times z but we can see uh current is cancelled and we can represent also this in this way now it's gonna be uh, the resistance is gonna be the reactance right and it's gonna be z the impedance let me call this angle phi angle phi right we can see that cosine phi is equals to 2 r over r over z this cosine phi is called the power factor this is called the power factor power factor correct so cosine phi is equals to r over z now let's apply this to the average power right here let's do it let's do it in this case in this case we know that power power is also defined as the current the root mean square current square times the resistance correct um also we can represent this in this way correct times the resistance from here it will go back to this um, condition of the throw voltage equals to current times z if we divide this by square root 2 and this by square root 2 we can get that this is represented as, as the root mean square voltage and this is the root mean square current so at the same time we can see that the throw voltage the root mean square of our voltage is equal to root mean square current times z. From here, if we solve for current, what do we have? From here, we have that current, the root mean square current is equal to root mean square voltage divided by z. Right? If we represent this, substitute this value right here, what do we have? This is equal to our root mean square voltage divided by z times the room square current times r and what is this? this is equals to uh, room in the square voltage room in the square current times r over z but what is r over z one more time is going to be cosine phi so in general we can represent the average voltage right here as uh, room square voltage uh, we can represent the average uh, average power as the room square voltage times the room square current times cosine phi correct perfect and um, again this is the um, power power factor perfect now let's uh, do an example using this this uh, circuit circuit imagine imagine that we have a first a resistor right we have a resistor and we use the resistor with this um, uh, source right AC source and imagine that both is equals to 100 volts and the frequency is equals to 60 hertz at the same time right we have that resistance is equals to 100 ohms let's find the current well using ohms law current uh, is found to be voltage divided by resistance in this case gonna be one amp now what happens if we use a battery okay the same the same information but gonna be 
a disappear, right? Barry. Perfect. So we are using the same the same voltage, the same resistance. What should be the current? Well, the current, one more time, is going to be voltage divided by resistance equals to 1 amp. Now let's go to the uh, capacitor. We have a capacitor. Correct. And now the um, capacitance is going to be equals to 20, 20 microfarad. Right? The same thing, right? It's going to be voltage equals to 100 volt. Frequency is equals to 60 hertz. Also remember that uh, omega is equal to 2 pi frequency. Perfect. What should be then the current? Well, current is equal to, in this case, we, we go to this formula. It's going to be voltage divided by the impedance. Remember Z. Z is called the impedance. Okay. And it has the same units of resistance, right? When we compare this formula to Ohm's law, right? Our res resistance has uh, units of ohms. The same thing happens for the impedance. Ohms, units. Great. Now let's substitute the values right here. And what do we have? In this case, it's going to be 100 divided by the uh, impedance. In this case, the impedance equals to the square root of r square plus d square d square. Where again, this um, this reactance is equals to omega times the inductance. So when we substitute the values, what do we have one more time? It's 100 divided by square root of 100 square plus 1 over uh, 2 pi frequency, the frequency is 60 hertz. Correct times um, times the inductance. What is inductance? Twenty, right? Twenty times ten to the negative six. Correct for that. The whole thing is well. When we do the calculations, we see that that uh, well. In this case, in this case, um, because we are dealing only with with the um, with the capacitor so we have no resistance okay so this is gonna be zero right here no resistance zero perfect so we have only only this quantity right here okay great uh, this is a general one right this is a general one where we have resistance and capacitor right here we have only the capacitor perfect so this is only this quantity correct perfect now uh, the answer for this one is going to be that the current is equal to current is going to be equal to 0.754 amps. Now let's combine them. Let's combine the um, before that. What about what about for a capacitor when we have a um, a battery. Let's do it right here. This is let's do the case where we have a capacitor and a battery. In this case, the current is equals to zero. Great. Again, let's combine these two capacitor and a resistor, and let's find the current. Imagine that we use the same circuits right here. Same picture. Now let's add the capacitor. Again, with the same uh, inductance, right? Inductance equals to 20 microfarad. In this case, we use the equation that I used before. Current is equals to V over Z and is equals to 100 over square root of 100 square plus 1 over 2 pi. Uh, 2 pi frequency times the inductance, right? The inductance is is the quantity is well. When we substitute the values, the answer is gonna be uh, that current is equals to 0 0.642 amps. See the difference when we are dealing with uh, individual quantities and we combine them. The current changes, right? Perfect. Now let's go to the next circuit, which is our L circuit. Our 
faire le circuit. And um, the same thing as before, we found already the, um, the quantity for each one individually. Correct, now let's use this uh, circuit in this way. This is the resistor, this is the inductor. And the same thing as before, correct, let's use uh, Kirchhoff's rules, the loop rule to find the total voltage. And the same thing, right, to our voltage is equals to our voltage to the resistor, to our voltage to the inductor. Well, one more time, these two are out of phase, meaning that this condition is not correct. But this is correct if we take these as vectors. Now these are correct, because again, these two are out of phase, and uh, we can make them to behave as vectors. Correct. Okay, how we can find then the magnitude? Well, the magnitude of the torque of uh, our source, correct, is going to be V when we use the Pythagorean theorem, V squared is equals to the R squared plus 3L squared. Perfect. And then let's find the magnitude is equals to square root of the R squared plus 3L squared. Uh, if we substitute the values as before, correct? We have that this is equal to square root of current uh, times resistance squared plus uh, current times the reactance uh, of the inductor square. Because the current is constant, since we are in a series, right? we have that the total voltage is equal to the voltage. So the source in this case is equal to current times the square root of R squared plus the um, reactants square. The same thing as before, so it's equals to current times z. z is the impedance. And uh, now take this value when we're dealing with inductors. Okay, perfect. So we have voltage is equals to current times the square root of r square plus right the reactants to the, uh, the reactants of the inductor square. Correct? Perfect. One more time, this is the angle phi, and the average power is going to be the same formula for each case, in this way. Correct? Perfect. Now, let's do an example as we did before, using this, this uh, circuit, right? Uh, our L circuit. The same information. Uh, before we start with a uh, resistor, correct? We have the same values: 100 volt frequency, 2 pi free, uh, 2 pi um, frequency, 60 hertz, 60 hertz, and the resistor gonna be 100 ohms. What should be the current? Again, gonna be voltage over resistance equals to one amp. What happens if we use a battery? The same thing, a battery, right? Then a resistor. And if we use the same um, quantity, same information, the circuitry is also equals to one amp. Now let's go to the inductor, correct? So let's use the inductor using a AC source, the same information. Now let's take the uh, inductors to be equals to the inductance to be equals to uh, in the previous example we used capacitor right capacitance was equals to what previous example 20 microfarad I think I use L but gonna be C uh, is the capacitance in this case gonna be the inductance equals to for this example we take the inductance to be equals to 0 0.08 um, henrys. Correct, that's gonna be the inductance. Now, what should be the current? Current is equals to our voltage divided by these reactants. Correct, when we substitute the values, one more time, this is voltage divided by uh, omega times 
the um, inductance where we substitute the values current is equals to uh, 3.32 amps. Now let's do the same thing using the battery. When we use the battery, correct, um, what should be the current? The current is going to be equals to one more time voltage divided by the reactance. But for a long time, uh, this uh, uh, inductor behaves as a wire, so this is not resistant. If this is zero, what do we have? Well, that the current goes to infinite. It's a huge current. We're in short circuit now. Short circuit because in this case, this inductor behaves as a wire. The wire has no resistance. Or very close, right to zero resistance. Perfect. Now let's combine, let's combine the, um, the resistor and the inductor and see what happens. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's place right here the inductor. And we have the same information. Correct. In this case, the current is going to be equal to current is equal to voltage divided by the impedance. And in this case, uh, the impedance is this quantity right here. And this is equals to to R square plus this impedance square. Perfect. When we substitute the values, we can see that the current is equals to two for this particular example, zero point nine five seven amps. Correct. Great. Finally, let's go to the last circuit, which is the LRC circuit in series. Great. The LRC circuit. Okay, in series. One more time, um, in this case we have the source, correct? Now we have the uh, resistance, we have the capacitor, and we have the inductor. Great. And we repeat the same steps as before. V or the source is equal to um, voltage through the resistor, correct? Plus voltage through the capacitor, plus voltage through the inductor, according to um, Kirchhoff's rules. But one more time, these three are out of phase. So the best way how we can work with this is if we treat these as vectors. Now, if we call these vectors, now this relationship is valid. And the same thing happens for the um, magnitudes. One more time, if we found before that this is the magnitude for the inductor, this is the magnitude for the capacitor, and this is for the resistor. These three are out of phase by 90 degrees. Because these two are in the same direction, imagine this is the case, correct? Now we add these two in the same direction and we can get this picture. Right? In this case, this magnitude is equal to VL minus VC. And this is stay the same, right? The voltage through the resistor. How we can find the throttle voltage? The voltage of the source. Well, using the Pythagorean theorem. Well, and this is V. In this case, V, V squared is equal to uh, VR squared plus VL minus VZ squared. Perfect. Or we can 
I find the mag is equals to the same thing as before because curry is constant, right? Curry times the square root of uh, R squared plus the reactance minus this reactance of the capacitor square. And we can represent this in the same way right, as before. The torque voltage is equal to current times the impedance. Now, in general, we have that the impedance is equal to this quantity right here. It's going to be the reactance through the um, capacitor minus the reactions to the inductor the square. This is a general equation for the impedance when we have these three these three um, elements the resistance the capacitor and the inductor and one more time this is again phi the angle right the difference between uh, these quantities and the total uh, or the voltage of the source in this case we can see also that tangent phi is equal to so we can use these quantities right here, right? VL minus VC over over um, VR, right? Or if we convert this into the um, current and the uh, reactances, correct? This is gonna be um, the reactance of the inductor minus the reactance of the capacitor divided by the resistance, correct? That's gonna be again um, tangent phi. To find the angle, you use this formula. Also, we can use this over here, it's a cosine, correct? But cosine in this picture is always positive. Uh, and sometimes we get this condition. Right here, imagine this is uh, VL, and now this is VC. What should be then the, the resultant? Well, it's gonna be now in this direction. Now the angle is gonna be negative. Using this equation, give us positive or negative angle. Okay, great. Uh, and with this, we finish this this uh, section using uh, AC circuit in series. Good. Uh, then see you in the next video that deals with IC circuits in parallel. Okay. See you in the next video. Bye.